Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to stand up here to preach the Word of God. And let me greet everybody once again. A happy Chinese New Year to all of you. You know, I am very happy this Chinese New Year because ang galing ng timing ni Lord, no? Because as people are doing many things to bring in luck and blessing in, the, in this year of the rat, we just learned from Colossians that we don't have to. We don't have to do anything to bring blessing into our lives. Why? Because we are already blessed having Jesus as our Lord and even more blessed because of what He has already done for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So a great way, you know, I've been thinking, a great way to respond to those who wish you blessing this year is to say, thank you. But I'm already very blessed ever since Jesus became my Lord. You can say that for those who will give you things to say, oh, more blessing to you. You can give that, you can tell that you are, thank you, but you are already blessed since Jesus Christ came into your life. And that would be a great opening line for you to share your testimony to them, tama ba? So I hope this Chinese New Year, as you celebrate it with your family, you will also share to them the blessing of having Jesus Christ in your life. And there's also one more reason I'm very happy today. It's because after today, we can put a check on our checklist, diba? As we strive to preach through the whole Bible in 10 years, today marks the katapusan of Book of Colossians. So three books done. Ezekiel, Jonah, check. Colossians, check. So 63 more books to go. Okay, but don't worry, we have 10 more years. Okay. Now, for those who are new with us, you know, you might be thinking, you know, what the ni Pastor Brian? You know, we have been going through the epistle of Colossians for the pa- in the New Testament for the past two weeks. And we have been learning that even though our world, our society forces us to believe in elemental spirits in, uh, and participate in superstitious practices or even religious practices, we don't have to submit to them. And we have, uh, we have learned two reasons why we don't have to from the book of Colossians. And that is because number one, Jesus is already Lord of all. And number two, Jesus has done it all for us. And he has defeated all the forces in this world. And so we only need to submit to Jesus. Today, as we cap off the epistle to the Colossians, we will learn what it means to submit to Jesus Christ alone. Okay, the world tells us to do this and to do that, but to us, we submit to Jesus only. What does it mean to be a follower of Christ? What does it mean to be a Christian? And what does a Christian do or doesn't do? And so my title for today is The Way of the Christian. The way of the Christian. I know some of you might be thinking, Pastor Brian, it sounds, your title, it sounds like those na parang Chinese Kung Fu style. The way of the snake. The way of the tiger. Okay? Kulang na lang yung gong na sound at the end of the word. Gong. Well, the reason, it was, it was intentional. That was intentional. Because while I was studying this passage, it reminded me of the movie, The Karate Kid. I mean, Karate Kid. I'm not talking about the 90s movie where the actor Pat Morita plays Mr. Miyagi, the Kung Fu Master. It, I, I was reminded of the remake that was released last 2010 where Jackie Chan plays the Kung Fu Master. Mr. Han and Will Smith's kid, si Jaden Smith, played Dre, the bullet kid who became his students. Sino na nakapanood na nito? Okay, medyo uh, not uh, a lot. If you haven't watched it, you should because it's a great movie. By the way, if you haven't watched this, bad news for you. I'm going to be doing some spoilers today, but you have no choice but to listen. Okay, anyway... I'll explain more of that later, but for now, I want you to keep your Bibles open to Colossians chapter 3. 
will be, and let us learn together what is the way of the Christian. And if it's not this circumcision, if it's not this do's and don'ts, what is the way of the Christian? You know, in the movie Karate Kid, when Dre went to Mr. Han's house for his first day of Kung Fu training, he was showing off his skills to Jackie Chan, okay? He was showing how fast he was. He was showing the moves, the Kung Fu moves that he already know. He was kind of telling Mr. Han that they don't need to start from the basic, but that he's already lear- but he's ready to learn the advanced ex- techniques of Kung Fu. Yun yun, sobra excited niya to learn more advanced technique. But to his surprise, Mr. Han told him to do a simple task repeatedly. Doon sa mga panood, nakapanood nun, you will learn, uh, you have probably seen this. He told him to do jacket off, jacket on. Medyo balikta, jacket off, jacket on. He told him to take off his jacket, put it on the floor, pick it up, hang it on the peg, put it on again, and then take it off again. Jacket off, jacket on. Paulit-ulit. And um, this scene came to my mind while I was reading Paul's instruction to the Colossian church. Instead of submitting to the do's and don'ts that the false teachers are forcing them to do, Paul instead tells them to put off their sinful nature and put on the characters of God in their lives. Jacket off, jacket on. Do you guys remember the do's and the don'ts that the false teacher are forcing to the Colossian church? The do 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 Did you guys remember that? Okay, let's test nga. What are the do's and the don'ts that the, uh, the false teacher were teaching the Colossians? Circumcision, okay. Ano pa? Okay, asceticism. And uh, observing of Jewish festivals. So these are the do's and the don'ts. Telling them, you have to do this or else you will not be a good Christian. You have to do that so that you will hear from God. Some of these are circumcision. Observing Jewish festivals. Observing the Sabbath. Worship of angels and spirits. Yan. Kilang, siya sabi niya, kilangan nyo rin gawin yan. It's not enough to have faith in Jesus. You have to do this. Okay? And he told them to don't do other things. Like, do not eat this. It will make you unclean. Do not drink. Do not touch. Marami silang instructions and rules binibigay sa Colossian church that Jesus and the apostles did not give them in the first place. Well, Paul taught them in Colossians that these things, these do's and don'ts, means nothing. They are useless. They will not bring more wisdom and knowledge. They will not teach them about the will of God. They will not make them more righteous in the eyes of God. Paul tells them they don't need to submit to these things to please God. Why? Because as we've learned last week, Jesus has done it all for them. And Jesus has defeated all the elemental spirits of this world and since now they are alive in Christ, iba yung gusto niyang do's and don't nila. Put off and put on. They must put off their sinful nature and put on the characteristics of Christ in their life. Jacket off, jacket on. And so let's look at the things that they should put off. Okay, look at their Bibles in verse 5 to 9. Paul enumerated there the things that they should put off. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Number one, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In this, you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. And so, let's enumerate no mga minention ni Paul. Okay? Put to death what? Sexual immorality. Impurity. Passion. Evil desire. Covetousness. 
Okay, and then in the la- in the in uh, verse nine, he told them to put away anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk. Paul is telling the believers in Colossians that instead of wasting their efforts and time to submit to the religious rituals and to the spiritual practices that means nothing and achieves nothing, they should instead exert their effort in putting off the sinful nature in their lives. Jacket off. You know, there, these are some of the sins that our heart harbors every day. Sexual immorality, evil desire, covetousness, tama ba? Lalo na ngayon, pagpunta nyo pa lang sa Facebook, you have a marketplace. Pagtingin nyo dyan sa marketplace, ang dami nyong gusto. Okay? Hindi na nga sa marketplace, sa mga post pa lang ng iba, when they post their new iPhone, ay, sana magka-iPhone din ako. I want that as well. In our everyday lives, as we run our business, as we take care of our kids, we have anger. In the way we deal with people, sometimes we slander. And kung kasaba natin mga barkada natin, ayan, lumalabas na yung obscene talk. Ano ba yan mga obscene talk na yan? Mapagmumura. Mga green jokes. Bullying others. Making fun of others. These are obscene talks. And these are all our sinful nature. And these are the things that Paul wants us to take off. Jacket off. You know, I don't have time to talk about all these things, but allow me to focus on one, sexual immorality, which is on top of the list. In fact, the, five, the first five on the list are related to sexual sin, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, covetousness. These are all related to sexual sin. The Bible calls it sexual immorality. Immoral meaning not conforming to accepted standards of morality. Or in other words, simple, it is wrong in the eyes of God. It is wrong in the eyes of God. What are examples of sexual immorality? What are examples of this? Premarital sex, which our world accepts, which our, our society generally practices, premarital sex, it's part of sexual immorality. Extramarital affair or adultery. Homosexuality is also part of sexual immorality. Masturbation is part. Pornography is also. Pastor, tumitingin lang naman ako. Ano masama doon? You know, the Greek word used for that word sexual immorality, the Greek is actually... Pornea. Pornea. From which pornography, the word pornography was derived. So watching this pornography, it's also sexual immorality. Okay? So ano pa yung kasama dito sa sexual immorality? To make it simpler, let me tell us, the, uh, let me tell you the right way, the only sexual act that is righteous in the eyes of God. The only sexual act that is right in the eyes of God is a sexual act between a husband, which is a man, and his wife, a woman. Ngayon kailangan na i-clear yan eh, no? Husband, lalaki, wife, babae. Those are the only sexual, that, not those, that is the only sexual act that is right in the eyes of God between a husband and a wife. All other sexual acts are wrong. In the eyes of God. You know, I am a radio guy. May nigao makinig sa radio. I listen to music more through radio than on Spotify or in YouTube. When I drive, I listen to the radio. My favorite station is Magic 89.9. Sino mga ano, mga Magic listeners dito? Konti lang, mga kasama ko, no? Okay, um... But if you tune in that station around 6 to 10 p.m. from Monday to Thursday, there is a show called Boys Night Out. 
Boys' Night Out. And from the title, you can, only, you can already derive the things that they talk about. They talk about boy stuff. Okay? And once in a while, they invite this doctor. He calls herself a sex psychologist to talk about these things. And one time, I was surprised he was discussing the benefits of watching porn and having and the benefits of having multiple sexual partners uh, before marriage. Pinag-uusapan nila yan. And they were saying it, she was saying, it's good, it's healthy. It can encourage you and your partner to be more sexually healthy. You know, and I was shocked. Grabe. And ito, sexual, uh, sex psychologist, of course, she has the science to back it up. But you know, ito mga research na to, ito mga research na to, they only, it, they don't tell you, but it's not total result. There is a statistic which they use to try to prove their theory. Since mga iba, naisip na it's pos- there's a positive effect, they will say it's positive kahit na it's just a small statistic. But you know, my, the, the point I'm telling you guys this is many people use science and statistics to try to prove what is right, what is healthy, what is good, what is wrong. There are many studies that tell us that porn can destroy relationships. And there are many families who have been destroyed by it as well. And so we know that it is unhealthy. But my problem is is, is we, if we base it all on science, people will use the, also the word science to tell, you to, do, to tell you otherwise. Do you get what I'm saying? Brothers and sisters, the world may tell us, okay, that these are good, they have health benefits, they will help you find the right one, or what have you, but the truth of the Bible is simply this. In the eyes of God, sexual immorality is wrong. People might say it might be healthy for your body. People might say it might be healthy for you and your partner. But in the Bible, it, clears, it clearly says God hates sexual immorality. Paul says these things are idolatry, a sin that God truly hates. And so, whether if it is healthy or unhealthy physically, in the eyes of God, it is wrong. And so we have to put it off in our lives Jesus, if Jesus is to be our Lord, put off sexual immorality, jack it off. Brothers and sisters, the world may tell us, don't do this, don't do that, don't play sungka, wag ka magwalis sa gabi, or whatever. But there's only one thing we need to put off, and that is our sinful nature. We have to slowly but surely rid ourselves of the sin that we do in our lives. Jacket off. And as we put off the sinful nature, what are the things that we should put on? We should put on the characteristics of God in our lives, the fruits of the Spirit. Let's look at what Paul tells the believers to put on a man. Look at your Bibles, verse 12 to 14. Look at your Bibles. It says, it says there, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate, holy and beloved, put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together together. In perfect harmony. So ano mga sinabi ni Paul to put on, jacket on, let's enumerate. He tells us to put on 
compassionate hearts. He tells us to put on kindness. What else? Humility, meekness, patience, and love. What are these things? These are some of the examples of who Jesus is. These are some of the examples of the characters of Christ. The false teachers told the Colossian believers to do many things. Sabi nila, kailangan be circumcised. Kailangan follow the Jewish laws. Celebrate the Jewish festivals. Worship the angels. Submit to the spirits. Follow the philosophies of this world. But Paul tells them, all of these are, are worthless. Why? Christ has done what needs to be done already. And there's only one thing we need to do, and that is to jack it on. Put on Christ likeness. Paul listed six things, but I only have time to focus on one. And I want to focus on the last word there. Kanina, I focus on the first one on the list. Now I focus on the last one, which is love. Love is an important part of being a Christian. It is one of the important attributes of God. It is ev love is evident in the life of Christ, and so it is vital in the life of a Christian. In fact, sabi ni Jesus, that love is the defining quality of a Christian. What is defining quality? A, a quality that people will know that you are a Christian. Jesus did not say, you, they will know you are my disciples when you have faith. Hindi yun sinabi ni Jesus. Nor did he say, they will know you are my disciples when you go to church. Nor did Jesus say, they will know you are my disciples when you do miracles. No. Instead, he told the, his disciples in the Gospel of John, he says to them, they will know you are my disciples when you love one another. Making love, loving one another, the defining quality of a Christian. Now, what does it mean to love? What does it mean to love? You know, our, in our world today, people confuse what love is. But the Bible teaches us what it means to love. Paul actually made a list in one of his letters in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter what? Marami may alam, kasi marami may alam ng, ng verse na yan. Maraming nangangarap na gamitin yung verse na yan sa kasal nila, tama ba? 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But here, Paul is not just talking about, it's not talking about romantic love, he's talking about brotherly love. And he tell, here, he teaches us what, how to love. Paano ba maglove, pastor? To love ba, pastor, is to tolerate people's sin? Ah, love ko sila, so okay lang kahit mali yung ginagawa nila. Okay lang. Ganun ba? No. Because, sabi nga ni Paul, Paul, uh, Paul says, love does not delight in, love does not delight in evil. So to love doesn't mean to tolerate sin. What does it mean to love? Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not proud. Instead, it is being humble. Parang nandun na rin sa list. O nga, no, pastor, it's the same as the list there. You know, I became a Christian only when I was in high school. I grew up in a non-Christian family, and I was the first in the family to come to know Jesus. And I, I can still remember the first time I came to this church. And what drew me to Christ was the love of people in this church. When I first entered this church, this church building, sa lower chapel pa, I can still remember, I was a first year high school, but the people who came to me and talked to me are the third year and fourth year high school. Eh, nagulat ako. Kasi sa Hope Christian High School, nung time namin, mga first year, hindi nakakausap mga fourth year. Bakit? Kung sila mga cool eh. Sila mga high, higher, ano, tama ba? Senior sila. But here, the first friends I made, mga atsi. 
Mga atsiko na nandito. They have been, uh, when I saw how they were kind to me, binarkada nila ako kahit first year high school lang ako, I realized, wow, this is what it means to be in the family of God. This is what it means to be loved. One of my first counselors, Pastor LJ, he was not a pastor then. Okay? Tinatawagan niya pa ako sa phone. Hindi niya lang kinakausap, hindi lang ako kinakausap niya, kinakausap niya rin nanay ko. Para isumbong mga pinagagawa ko, hindi. No, he was, she was, he was concerned with my mom so that my mom, who is not a Christian, would know what I was doing in the church. That's love. I can still remember there's one church event that tapos late evening I was an usher pero naubusan na ng car pa uwi. Wala akong wala ko hindi ako makauwi and my magko-commute na sana ako and I met Pastor Wiljo at in Benavides nakaupo siya sa car niya. Hindi pa siya pastor noon. Hindi nung niya sangka uh, paano ka uwi Brian? Sabi ko magko-commute. Tara, hatid na kita. Saan ka nakatira? Sabi ko, sa tandang Sora, congressional. <laughs> Sabi niya, Oy, alam ko yun. Ahente ako sa Cherry Puderama. And even though it was so late that evening, kahit nakatira lang siya sa Yellow Building, hinatid niya ako hanggang congressional kasama si Ati Lori. Hindi pa siya kasal nun. And, wow, libreng sakay. Ganyan magmahal pala ang mga Kristiyano. And I appreciate that. And that draw me to Christ. Those type of loving action draw me that, to, to who Jesus is. And these are examples of love. And it is very important in the life of a Christian. I just watched the movie Two Popes. And I learned that Pope Benedict, in one of his books, he wrote, Truth is vital. But without love, it is unbearable. Truth is vital, but without love, it is unbearable. And it is true, the Apostle Paul says the same thing. He says, if I speak in the tongues of man and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And who can stand the noisy gong? Gusto nyo ba? Gong, 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 palagi sa inyo. That is truth without love. And Jesus came to tell the world the sad and awful truth that we are lost in our sins. But as he proclaimed that truth, he also showed his love by dying for sinners like you and me. That is truth with love. Brothers and sisters, let us put on Christ's likeness in our lives. The world tells us to do this, do that. But there's only one thing we need to do, and that is to live out Christ in our lives. Put on the characteristics of Christ in our life. Jacket on. So jacket off, put off your sinful nature. Jacket on, put on the characteristics of Christ in your life. This is the way of the Christian. This is the way of the Christian. Jacket off, jacket on. Now, let us go back to the Karate Kid. When Dre finally got frustrated, napagod na siya, jacket off, jacket on, a thousand times, he walked out from Mr. Han, sabi niya, ang dami beses ko na ginawa, wala ko natutunan about Kung Fu. But Mr. Han told him to stay put and put on his jacket. And as he did, Mr. Han showed him how he became stronger through putting off his jacket and putting on his jacket. And after that, this is what Mr. Han told him. He told him, Kung Fu lives in everything we do. It lives on how we put on a jacket and how we take off a jacket. It lives on how we treat people. Everything is Kung Fu. You know, I remember this when Paul wrote to the Colossians the same thing with regards to being a Christian. Look at your Bibles, verse 17. Sabi niya, and whatever you do, 
in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Sabi ni Jackie Chan, Kung Fu lives on how we treat people. Sabi ni Paul, being a Christian, Christ lives in how we treat other people as well. Look at your Bibles again in verse 18. Sabi niya, Wives, submit to your husband as is fitting to the Lord. Husband, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Father, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. To the bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters. To the masters, treat your slaves justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Why did Paul wrote these things? He wrote these things to tell us, that the Christian life is not a practice of religious rituals. No, it is done in our everyday lives. Christ must be lived out in everything we do. Christ must be lived out in the way we treat our family, in the way we treat our wives, in the way we treat our children, in the way we treat our friends, in the way we treat our colleagues, our employees, our bosses. Christ must be Lord. That's why Paul wrote these things. Christ must not be just a religious figure. No. Christianity is not just a religion. It is not just a religious practice. It is not just a spiritual ritual. Christ, it is a way, Christian life is a way of life. It is live, it is a life that is lived out completely through Christ, in Christ, and for Christ. As we fulfill our God-given role as husbands to love our wives, it is not dependent on how lovable, lovable our wives are. We are to love our wives regardless of how often they nag us or how often they correct us. We should love them and not be harsh with them. Why? Bakit? Hindi dahil sa kanila. But because Jesus is our Lord who loves us despite we are also unlovable. Likewise, for the wives, they should submit to their husbands, even though sometimes coming mga husbands, we are so unreasonable, sometimes lang. No matter how annoying we can be, wives, submit to your husband as you submit to the Lord. And as I say this, I know it is not easy. It is not easy. It's not easy for me to love my wife. Okay, pag uwi ko, ang dami mong mali sa grammar. My wife tells me that. E nakainis. My wife tell, nags me of the things that I need to do na hindi ko ginagawa. It's so hard to love. Ako naman, hindi na naman nagpabilis mag-submit sa akin. Bakit? Ang tagal-tagal ko mag-decide. But it's not, it's not easy for my wife to submit to me. But the key to love is to remember the love of Jesus for us as He died on the cross. And the key to submitting is to see how Jesus submitted to the will of His Father, even submitting to the death on the cross. Other examples that Paul gave. Paul gave um, instructions on how father should raise their children in their lo- in the Lord. Paul also talks to the to the employees, to the bond servants on how they should listen to their masters and the masters how they should treat their employees justly and fairly. I cannot talk all about these things in our limited time, but you know we have businessmen in our congregation, good, business, good Christian businessmen who have been doing business for such a long time. You can ask them how they can treat our employees the way Jesus wants us to treat them. We have so many here been working in corporations as Christians, you can ask them, Pano ba kung nakainis yung boss? What can I do? 
You can approach them and ask them. You know, this is what it means to be a Christian. To live out Christ in our everyday lives. You know, it is so sad in our world today, many people believe that Christianity is irrelevant already. Christianity is irrelevant because to many people, in the eyes of many people, it has just become a religious practice. Yesterday, we went to IDC and Pastor Ravi was sharing that he was preaching and uh, it was shown on TV and his grandchildren told him, I like your show. To the kids, Christianity has just become a show. But there's nothing can be more wrong than that. The reason why people think that Christianity is irrelevant is because how many people treat this treat it as a religious practice only. So people see it, ah, it's just going to church. It's just about being baptized. It's just about having communion and all of these stuff. But Christianity, brothers and sisters, is relevant because it affects our whole life on how we live, on how we treat others, on how we raise our family, how we run our businesses, how we work for others, how we treat other people. Being a Christian is there. You know, the false teacher forces religious practice to the believers saying that these are what needs to be done to be a Christian. But Paul tells us that the Christian life is a life lived out for Jesus. A a life completely lived out for Jesus. Jesus in everything we do. And we say, And we have. You know, if this was not so, then Jesus would not have not come down from heaven. He wouldn't have just came down from heaven. Nandun na lang siya, just gave us instructions. Instead, Jesus came down from heaven to earth. Became a son who was obedient to his father. Became a carpenter who worked on this world like each one of us. Who taught his disciples how to serve. Who taught his disciples that if you want to be first, you have to be the last. Who taught his disciples to be kind to one another. You know, if Christianity is simply a religious practice, hindi na kailangan dumating ni Jesus on this earth to show us how to live. But he did to set an example for us. Brothers and sisters, The Christian life is not just a religious practice. No, it is a way of life. A life lived through, a life lived through in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. A life that is lived out for the one who gave his life to us. The Christian life, brothers and sisters, is a life completely lived out through Jesus in Jesus, and for Jesus. And so I hope and my prayer is that as we finish, as we close the book of Colossians, we will not be tempted to submit to the rules and to the practices of this world. Instead, we put on Christ. And we put off our sinful nature. And in everything that we do, in how we treat others, in how we live our lives at home, at school, at church, in our businesses, in our workplace, may we be able to submit to, to, the, to our Lord and live out Christ each and every day. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for today. We thank you for your word that reminds us how we should live according to Christ. And so Lord, help us to remember to put on Christ and to put off our sinful nature, and in everything that we do, help us to live out Christ in our families, in our friends, in everyone that we meet. May they say Christ in us. Amen and amen.